Hey guys, this is Elise. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. The topic of this video is going to be, I'm going to give you a home studio tour online. So before I get started, I want to say thank you so much to the wonderful friends who joined me for my first ever online home studio tour. I had never done anything like that before and we ran into some connectivity blips which led to this decision for me to make a pre-recording of a studio visit so that you could still get what you came for and um, hopefully it brightens your day a little bit. So um, I'm gonna start from my storage room. My storage room carries my big art material items, the things that I can't just have laying out in my st actual studio space because it's not large enough to both store and work on things. So over here in this part of the room, I have blank canvases and these are pre-stretched, pre-gessoed, which means that um, someone else had put together stretcher bars to make a frame out of wood and then stretched canvas on it and um, and then gessoed it with gesso paint. So the gesso paint, it helps to seal and lock the surface so that, which is very porous, so that paint and whatever other materials I use on top of the surface will have a better time sticking on it and um, not flaking off or not getting way too absorbed so that the color can be vibrant once it's applied. On this side of the storage space, I have unfinished artworks, which are, some of them are just started, some of them are midway through, some of them are almost done, um, and I'm excited to see, along with others who are waiting for them to be completed, so excited to see. How they all pan out. So from there, we're, I'm going to take you across the hallway um, to my actual studio space. And I have to say, whew, before I introduce you to what I love as a creative space, um, I have to give credit where credit is due. I just think that's so important. So um, I'm very, very thankful because I could not have this studio space were it not for my family and um, their support of my doing art um, and um, being okay with me having a space like this to, to, to take care of me and do what I love. And so I, I'm just so thankful for them. I'm also really thankful for my partner for helping me put it together because some of the pieces are heavy um, like the furniture and just getting all the materials in this space took some took some strength and effort So I'm just really really thankful for them All right, so here we go In the middle of my studio space. I have a makeshift island It is created by putting two bedside tables together and on either side There are two drawers, which is so great because it's great storage space I currently don't actually have anything in them um, because I tend to work standing when I do creative works. I tend to not sit and that's why there's no chairs or stools in this studio space. Um, and, and so anyhow, I like to work standing and it's a great, great height for me to, to work standing on my creative things. Behind it in this corner is an easel and on the easel, I currently have a couple studies out. So I feel like for me personally, it's been always really helpful to have some references of black and whites, form, contour, structure, shape, and um, the gradations of, of uh, what do you call it, hues, blacks to whites, and that whole grayscale in between. Um, because the basics are so important. Having a good foundation as I'm making any kind of project is a really good informant for me personally. So I like to keep that within um, eyesight when I'm working. Other times I'll work directly on the easel with 
a canvas and I'll be painting something so I might not have these particular studies with me but I usually keep some kind of studies around me um, and I, I it gives me peace of mind to do that so from there I'll take you over to the other side of my studio space so this wall is um, almost entirely just storage space and I love it on in my storage um, bookshelves I have gouache paint poster color paint watercolors which are water-based paints I have acrylic paint which is more of a plasticky medium but also manipulated with water and it dries so fast um, I have oil paints I have my desktop computers in the bottom section because I mostly use them just for like archiving and keeping data I don't really use them for my actual creative processes so I keep them down there and I take them out when I need them and then I have some more gesso in case I want to really seal something in and create a thick surface. Um, I have colored cardstock and paper. I have um, artis artisan level quality um, papers and pre gessoed but not pre stretched flat canvases, which are great for when I have to. Um, go somewhere outdoors to go painting and I can easily just stash that in my bag and, and go somewhere. I have my charcoals and sprays and gel mediums, some extra glue and collage and uh, three-dimensional materials, mosaics, other pieces on that side. Um, and I also like to keep in that red black bag down there my apron so that I can keep my clothes clean. So um, that's a little bit about my studio. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have wonderful markers and some color pencils over there as well. Okay, so from there, I'm going to give you a little bit of an, um, a show and tell with a recent, um, with an artwork that I've been working on. I have had so much fun with collage in the last year. I am a total amateur. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, so um, I'm not really going to be able, I'm not really a good teacher on how to actually do it. I think basically if I like something, then I just follow my intuition and I put things together in a way that makes sense to me. Um, yeah, so. Anyway, here, here goes my show and tell. So I wanted to share this artwork with you um, as a reflection on what this experience has kind of felt like for, um, for what I've noticed for many people, as well as a little bit for myself. Um, I feel like I've been noticing a lot of symptoms of trauma and grief complicated grief among, among healthcare workers, first responders, and frontline workers. And um, some of those symptoms are having really troubled sleep, flashbacks, nightmares, repeated nightmares, um, and feeling like they have to look over their shoulder constantly, flip, feeling like their worldview is really challenged and their world safety is flipped upside down, their sense of safety and their worldview is flipped upside down, lots of anxiety, um, symptoms of depression, and uh, sometimes having major panic attacks and grief. It's, it's, um, it's just so hard for so many people right now. So I made this piece thinking about trauma and the road to recovery for um, for our frontline, for our frontline people. So, um, there's little sections on here. I try to capture a little bit of um, the different seasons, like COVID exploding in our springtime. And so I have flowers up here, and um, and as we're looking forward to the fall and and what the summer is going to look like, I have. Uh, it's some trees here with sunset lighting on them and some changing of the leaves 
hoping that in the near future we can really edge back to the middle and find some find some normalcy um, to remember times with hope that we can have tea dates and coffee dates again um, to freely have bike rides without worrying about the people around us um, thinking about all the moms and the kids these days the moms who are delivering babies in hospitals or at home in these times um, with very restricted number of visitors and support people in the labor delivery rooms and um, in the midst of all this thinking of also the the children and all the adjustments that they're having to make and and changes that they're facing um, remembering the light and doing our best each one of us individually to shine our light in our corners of the world um, to help bring back the joy and um, yeah and, and in all of that keeping hope so these are just some of the, the thoughts I had and I, I put in some colored hearts and bubbles and circles and things um, and plant life to refer to um, you know the good that does that we still have the good and the smart and the genius that that we have collectively as a human society and um, the hope that we have because we are a resilient people and we stand on some really great shoulders of the people who have lived before us um, you know we can we can really make it through all this that's going on and help each other through so those are just some of the thoughts and the intentions that I had when I was making this piece and I don't know if it's quite finished yet um, but that's kind of where it's at right now and um, that said I'll segue to the closing of this video so um, I have really enjoyed uh, sharing a little bit of my studio space with you and some of the creative works I've been working on. I'd be so curious and would really enjoy seeing a few of your creative works, whether they're the masks that you're making for yourself, for your friends or your family or your neighbors, or if you're a creative journaler and you like to doodle on the edges of your notebooks or your books or your Bibles. Um, for those of you who like to do weaving and maybe you're um, making rosaries or make, making quilts or um, I don't know, whatever you do. And then uh, still others, you might be making songs and uh, creating poetry or writing things. I, I'd be really curious to see some of your creative works um, and learn more about how you store your creative supplies and how your creative process works. Um, oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to share. So I wanted to um, encourage you all to get connected with whatever your funnest, most enjoyable, most accessible, non-intimidating method of self-expression creatively would be. And the reason for this is because our brains are divided into left hemispheres and right hemispheres. And um, I mean, there's a lot more to it, but in terms of processing our lived experiences, those two um, are relevant for this particular conversation. So your right hemisphere of the brain is the one that takes in the sensorial information, the sights, the sounds, the smells, the textures, the touches, the emotions, all of those nonverbal pieces. And then your left brain is the section that organizes those experiences with patterns, with words, with paragraphs, with analyses, with numbers, and, and then it spits it right back to the right side of the hemisphere, the right side spits it right back to the left hemisphere, and as the brain processes this information back and forth, back and forth, it becomes a refined, understandable memory for your body to um, fully incorporate in its life history. Um, part of what helps prevent things like complicated grief or PTSD 
is by helping the brain process information on a regular basis, right back and forth, right hemisphere, left hemisphere, right hemisphere, left hemisphere. And a great way to do that without that much effort is to do things that involve bilateral movement um, using both hemispheres of your body. So your, le your right side and your left side, both of them being engaged while, um, while you're processing some of your experiences. For some of you, that might be gardening and landscaping. Others of you, it might be home improvement projects. For others, still, it might be um, visual arts, like what I'm doing, or it might be performing arts, like playing instruments or making songs or make, uh, doing drama things or creating chore choreography. Whatever it is, I want to encourage you to do these things and engage with it, to enjoy and feel no guilt or shame for having moments where you are in just pure bliss, enjoying your own creative process in these times. It's a great way to self-care, and um, in the big picture, it also helps to flatten the curve, the third curve that experts are predicting will be the mental health wave um, impacted by COVID-19. So anyhow, all that said, would love to see some of your creative works and um, hear about your processes hear any of your thoughts. And until next time, take care. Bye.